ST is a worldwide semiconductor company producing integrated circuits. Do you know what an integrated circuit is and how it enters into your life? Follow us on this journey from silicon to we. Sand. Everything starts from a grain of sand. From sand comes silicon, the base of our integrated circuits, the chips, key players in the electronics revolution, making our lives more and more comfortable. Silicon is one of the most common and cheap elements in nature. But how do we transform it into a minuscule circuit capable of very fast and complex functions? Let's start our journey through the high-tech world of ST using simple language and focusing on the main steps. Pure silicon is extracted from common sand by chemical industries, cleaning it, melting it at 1500 degrees Celsius, and chemically purifying it to reach the correct purity degree. As a result of this process, silicon producers come out with big ingots having a unique crystalline structure. Ingots can have different diameters. Next, the ingot is cut into very thin slices, called wafers. Only defect-free and pure wafers are on one side mirror-lapped. ST buys these polished, perfectly flat silicon wafers. They are the substrate where we start to produce the devices. Here begins the ST manufacturing process, a complex sequence of operations requiring very high technology equipment and special rooms more than 1,000 times cleaner than a surgery room. The designer invents the new circuit and designs its schematic. The schematic is translated into a drawing that reproduces the different layers that manufacturing will realize to obtain the chip. It's possible to compare an electronic device to a building. We need a drawn project to report all the instructions and the notes. The floors can be compared to the different layers, while the stairs or the lifts can be compared to the interconnections between the conductive layers. In the layout, we identify with different colors the layers or the different materials. In each layer are designed geometries, like the map of a single floor of the building. Our manufacturing builds the chip by reproducing on the wafer each layer one after the other. Layers can be of conductive or insulator materials and are worked removing selected parts of them in order to obtain an electrical or conductive path inside the insulators to avoid short circuits. Conductive layers are obtained by doping the silicon with gas diffusion or ion implantation techniques. The insulator is silicon oxide. To reproduce the shapes in a layer, we use masks with the proper drawing for each layer. The mask is stamped on the silicon with photolithographic techniques. Chemical removals allow us to shape the geometries inside the different layers. Layer after layer, mask after mask, the complete device layout is generated inside the silicon and the device is built. This is a picture at the Scansion electronic microscope of a vertical section of a device. It is possible to identify the structure, the different layers, and the same electrical interconnections. Now we're considering just one device, but on the wafer surface we build in parallel several hundreds or thousands of identical devices called dice. Completed wafers will be tested with thousands of tests to verify the correct electrical functionality of each die. Only the correctly working dice will pass the testing. The others, that for any reason don't perform correctly, will be marked with a black ink spot as reject. Now each die needs a package designed to fit its electrical and physical performances. The desired use, as digital or analog or power devices, drives the package study and the design. For example, if the chip has to manage high power, such as in car applications, the package will be able to dissipate a lot of heat, and the electrical connections device board will be thick enough not to be damaged by the electrical current or the heat. If the die is to go into a cellular phone, 
dimensions are dictating the rules. More generally, the package must be designed to shield the die from mechanical and moisture outages and to allow all the electrical connections toward the outside, power supplies, ground, signals in and out. To allow the assembly operations, the total wafer thickness must be reduced and all the dice on the silicon surface must be separated using a diamond saw. Robots pick the good dice up from the sawed wafer and attach them with glue or metal alloys on a copper frame in stripes. The inked dice are left apart. Again, robots bond gold, copper, or aluminum wires to connect the outputs of the die to the proper pins or balls, hundreds of pins in a few seconds. Other robots later cover each attached die with a special resin, singulate them, and cover the contact leads or balls with tin. A traceability code is marked on each of them. Due to the thousands of different electronic devices and their applications, it's easy to imagine that there are several different packages. The main differences are physical dimensions, starting with one square millimeter up to two to three square centimeters, number of electrical connectors or pins, ranging from three pins up to a few thousand pins, power dissipation, from less than a microwatt up to several tens of watts, and number of silicon dice inside. Most often there is only one, but it can also be up to ten dice working together. Let's stop for a moment in our flow and open a parenthesis. Aside from the huge family of electronic devices, there is the other one of micro-electromechanical systems, or MEMS, where with silicon are built both the mechanical and electrical parts linked to generate a complete sensor system in a very small chip. The sensors family includes gyroscopes, accelerometers, digital compasses, pressure and temperature sensors, microphones, and inertial modules. The MEMS family has its own packages, for example, with a hole to allow pressure or sound waves to reach the die. The popularity of MEMS is rising quickly as they are in games and mobile smartphones to detect movements, orientations and accelerations, sounds and much more. Also, health is a great field for MEMS applications. Heart parameters, temperature, DNA, insulin pump and rehab movement detection. Coming back to our flow, assembled parts are submitted to another testing quality control, and they are ready for shipment. Chips are loaded in anti-static tubes or trays, packed in boxes, and delivered to customers. Here ends ST's process, but not the journey of the chips. Our customers mount the chips on their systems, and finally they arrive to you in your daily life. Do you want some examples? Cellular phones, PC hard disks, motorway toll-paying devices, credit cards, and then cars, TVs, tablets, and much more. And surely all of you know game controllers, didn't you? Did you know that there are small chips to allow you to play your favorite games? You have followed the grains of sand, and now you understand how to arrive from silicon to we. Our journey is ended. But for the grains of sand on which is based the technological revolution of the 20th century and that will characterize even more the third millennium, the journey has just begun. New wonders are coming for it and for you.